Okay, so the next panel is going to be the indie panel. Indie panel. And I have a great show for you. I have some of the biggest indie names. I have Petter Henriksson of Landfall Games. Petter, are you with us? I am with you, Per. All right. Hey, Petter, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm. I feel. I feel complete now that I see you. And and you actually, um, you you took your first steps in the, our glorious industry in this city. Is that I right? I did. I did. Yeah. Twenty thirteen, twelve, or something. Wow. That's yesterday. Yeah. How yeah. could you move so fast? Uh, you know, time happens. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know, man. I just, I just uh, got really lucky, I think. Okay. Well, I would argue it's um, talent and skill and and great, great fashion style. All right, Torreson, <laughs> you want Torreson? Are you with us? I think so. Oh wow, that there's you. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Uh, I've shaved. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> this Parts. is what shave looks like. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh, wait, oh, fuck, it's mirrored. Yeah. Well, you know, I've, sh I've shaped, shaped up for the conference. My shave is bigger than your shave. Yeah, yours kind of goes around. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and then it stops. But let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, Johan? Uh, I am currently in uh, what's officially named Lilla Konturet, uh, which is basically a small closet with some uh, paintings in it, in my apartment. Uh, in Malmö. All right, Malmö. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's a relief. So um, we're covering different angles of the geography, and also with me on stage is my uh, my identical twin, my partner in crime, my co-pilot Anton <laughs> Albin yes. from um, from our from our office, the Swedish Games Industry Secretariat, and and as you can see, he's here, so we don't have to ask him where he is. Right, yeah. I'm here, uh, and I work as our indie ambassador at the association. Excellent. So this is the indie panel. Um, so can I open with a philosophical question? What does indie mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know we were about to fight. Yeah. yeah let's start uh, with the interesting juicy bits. Who wants to take uh, a stab at that? Johan, let's hear a definition. The uh, like a definite definition. Sure. Why not? Like. Uh, like Let's take a like beside a hill to die on. Um, I think that indie is a fairly useless term if it's not being used as a marketing tool for some reason. But uh, indie can be a lot of things. So if I had to define it as something, I'd define it uh, as punk in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes you have punk like Six Pistols, which is the Spice Girls of punk. And sometimes you have punk like The Exploited, which is actual like hardworking people making noise. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a weird label that was relevant in 2012 to launch uh, <laughs> good video games on Steam and XBLA. And now yeah. it's kind of watered down and mainly, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what it is anymore. Is it an attitude? It's, I think it's like that American senator said uh, about a lewd subject. It's like, I know it when I see it. Right. Uh, that's great for you, not helping us so much, but thank you. No, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Petter, do you have a better definition? I mean, so I like when words make sense and then when they have like purpose. Uh, but I agree that the purpose of the word indie is, is useless because it's, you know, you can either define it as, as Johan says, as a feeling. And then we can just fight about it forever of who is in the and who isn't. Or we can say that it is a self-owned company that that, that also self-publishes. And that there is a very hard, like that is an indie company that is not an indie company. The purpose of pointing out who is that and who isn't that, I don't really see the use for. But uh, but it does seem like an extremely popular topic for, for everyone to obsess about. Yeah, it's a good way to start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which we love here at Sweden Game Conference. But uh, <laughs> isn't that... Um, so you're, you're saying it's an identity, Petter. You want to be indie because it's it's an identity and that it some people have it and some people don't. And then... No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. What? I didn't say any of 
That, that <laughs> just to, gave the, the, I will I will get burned on Twitter, man. You can't say that. <laughs> well, um, okay. no, 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 it's not an identity. It's a, it's a. You can you can look at it on a on a legal on a legal level and see this company is self owned and they are self published. Therefore, they can they can be indie. Or you can say it's a feeling and it's punk and this feels like an indie game because they're like indie people. Uh, and I think majority of indies belong in the in the in the feeling punk. So yeah. All right. Very. But but you say you said that uh, indie is something that people want to be, that they aspire to be, that it's something glorious, maybe, or, or something uh, positive. Uh, I would I would say that the term is romanticized, and uh, yes. All right. So you uh, prefer the legal definition to whatever I said? No, no, I don't really have a, a stake in this game. I'm saying that you, you do <laughs> one of them. <laughs> they're they're both they're both equally by like okay answers to the same questions. Well, useless. Also, landfall is not landfall does not stand for any of my opinions. They're all all mine. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's the same yeah. with uh, with Raw Fury. Anything that yeah. comes out of my mouth is my mouth. Yeah. yeah, but everything I say, I say on behalf of all the members of the association <laughs> and everybody yes. agrees with every word. Not <laughs> <laughs> Anton. Can you make this any clearer? Well, I I, I was actually going to go with the boring definition Petter gave because uh, that's an actual definition. You can be independent, like legally independent, do whatever you want, and nobody can have opinion of what you're creating. Mm. Um, and that's kind of what good art artists do always. And that's also uh, art. It's also a term that you can discuss what is, what's it, what isn't. And that's kind of like indie as well. It's it's a it's a very very soft kind of term um, that people I might call people indie, who other don't call indie, and vice versa, uh, d depending on what we enjoy and what we aspire to and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's it's very watered down these days, and it's also a marketing term. So, but know. is it almost like artistic integrity? Yeah, probably uh, that would be a thing. Um, and that's why some people want to be indie. Yeah, because you want to be yourself. You want to be an authentic uh, creator that does something interesting, and not just um, want to make money. Like we're kind of money averse in the games industry. Like my second career as a rapper, because I grew up in a rough neighborhood. No? no, I'm not following. <laughs> no. No. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm getting, um, yeah, I'm hallucinating here. But, <laughs> but is that the reason why? Why? So what if? What if somebody? Is there anyone who doesn't want to be indie? Is there somebody w that I would go to and say you're indie, and they would be like, no, don't, don't give me indie. <sighs> You would probably not go and call somebody indie uh, like that. Who <laughs> I don't see how that would happen. Yeah. But but yeah, there's definitely people who don't call themselves indie because they're focusing on like I don't I don't know growth, for example, mm. and make making a big um, like umbrella corporation. That mm. <laughs> they won't call themselves indie because they're doing business mostly and investing themselves probably, and they're very very much dependent on a lot of other organizations to yeah. su succeed okay mm. uh so i'm i'm not done with this topic i know there are some other questions we should talk about but i'm not done with this topic because there was a question on a, on a on an earlier panel um, <coughs> uh, that it, that was w w is it possible to succeed in in game development if you don't love games uh -huh. yeah sure yeah who said why yes? shouldn't it be yeah i said yes you won. Hey, but, hey, you're, you're the same yeah. angle as uh, Petter, so <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah, I don't know. You, you uh, need your move your mouth more. But it, I can cover up. Uh, <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure there is. Like, it's maybe not the uh, maybe not the best way to succeed, uh, but <laughs> it's definitely a way to succeed. I think there's. Uh, I guess you could argue that there are companies that have succeeded despite not necessarily uh, being super hyped for for video games. But um, but to be clear, I don't think the success factor lies in the amount of passion you can pour into a project because a ton of project a ton of projects that have a ton of passion poured into them uh, will fail. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if passion was the deciding factor, then we would have a lot of more uh, indie successes. Uh, 
So I'm quite sure that there are companies with people inside them on top level uh, that doesn't necessarily give too much of a fuck about video games, but they're good business people. Uh, I think they understand the industry. I think they like, care enough to, you know, to make it work. But you don't need to necessarily love it. I think I, have, I don't think that go, that goes for anyone in the call. But um, yeah, I'm I'm tempted to to challenge you to name some names, but I guess that's going to ruin my. I don't want to out any yours. third party yeah. companies. <laughs> and, and they're not here to defend themselves Me. anyway. But can you <laughs> no, say that, this? That'd then? be rude. Can you say this then? What, can you be indie without passion? Aha. If you're depressed and lethargic, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't know. Uh, I think that's probably harder because it comes from a comes from like a, a different angle. I'd say uh, I don't necessarily agree that indies aren't about growing and so on. But uh, if we're going by the the feeling definition of indies, uh, I think that you'd maybe the definition of indies is honest and brave things, like regardless of what they create music, games, uh, French extreme cinema, just honest and uncompromising stuff. Um, All right, artistic I'd integrity let, again. Yeah, let's let's kill off my previous definition and go with honest and, and uh, <laughs> stuff is that. Yeah, that works for me. Petter, what about passion? Let me just okay. Let me just do this without sound, I guess. Um, so I, I I don't think I think the question is more like to, how many people are in the game industry if they if they don't have passion, because uh, there, there's there's if you want to make money there's there's simpler ways to make money I think, uh, and it's just you know you if you're here you're probably like games in some way. Uh, or maybe you just got lost, but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't think passion is a, is a big factor at succeeding. You need to be passionate about your job, but your job is not to like games unless you are, uh, I don't know, either making certain types of game design that you really need to like or that you invest in games and then you kind of have to at least like the ones you invest in to some degree. At least in PC consoles. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we may have exhausted this topic. I don't know if I, I know for sh for a fact that we failed to define indie, but maybe we captured the difficulty of defining indie. Can I add something to the passion part or the? Oh yeah, of uh, course. So so the, the the I definitely know people who have succeeded as indie developers uh, with with big big uh, successes. And their their angle of it is that they enjoyed maybe a handful of games for the Super NES or or way back, and they think games today are not very good in some ways, or they are missing something, and they're adding that. So I would not. They were, if you ask them, are you a gamer? Are you passionate about games? They would probably say, no, I don't play a lot of games, mm. but I used to like. 10, 15 years ago, then I was a software developer for 10 years, then I decided to make a game, it was a big success. So, so you can take many different, um, uh, you can go many different directions of that as well. Um, and the answer for that will not be the same for every developer, I think. Right. Um, okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, so let's go to the questions that have been uh, uh, prepared. What would you say is the biggest challenge for startup slash indies today? Maybe we should say game startups then, because it was so. Or do you want to argue for 20 minutes about game startups? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I'm, I'm down. Let's pick a fight. Like indie and startup is probably like the same word in just like the tech sector and the, the game sector. Yeah, there's a yeah. slash. It's at startups slash indies. Yeah. So define it as you like, but what is the biggest challenge, Petter? So I, I looked at this question before and I was like, wow, that's a really great question to ask me who haven't been a startup for quite some time. Uh, so I don't like my honest answer is I don't I don't know. Uh, I talked to a bunch of startups though, so I can I can kind of like retell what I think is hard, uh, and you know money is hard. It's hard to fund people. 
and make them eat food. Um, and, you know, working together. That's the things that are always hard with any startups are hard for, for indies. Uh, I wouldn't say that specifically game startups have a hard time in these things, though. Uh, I don't have a good answer to this one. Yeah, but let, let, me, let, me, let me hear Johan's one, and then I'll no, tell no, him that no, he's wrong. No, right. I'm not letting <laughs> you go yet, Peter. So if you were to start Landfall today, what would you have done differently? So to be clear, I joined Landfall a little bit after it started, so I didn't start Landfall. OK, but, good. Uh, Thanks but, uh, for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's confusion on this point all the time. Uh, so if we started out fresh today, we would have uh, we would have not signed a publisher. That is the thing that we would have done. Uh, we would have the marketing right now works similar as it did back then. So we uh, we built the community by posting p snippets of our games piece by piece, uh, and then we. We did a bunch of prototypes and we picked the ones that had more attention. Um, and uh, yeah, we. That, that, that's, I think it's roughly the same environment as it was back then. I don't. Oh, specifically right now because of how Twitch has changed and how it's more variety uh, friendly as it was back in back in 2015 when we when we started out. Because uh, there was definitely a period the last few years where Variety, variety content was harder to get marketing for, but now I feel like it's it's similar as it was back then. Peter, I will never say you're a co-founder. Can I say you're a no-founder of Landfall? I'm a co-owner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Johan, what's the biggest challenge for startups, uh, game startups today? I, I agree with uh, a lot of what Peter said. Uh, I would perhaps add uh, like even pre-corona times, but especially now during corona times, uh, having clear and easy access to information if you don't already know where to look. Uh, like generally, I think there's a challenge for startups across the board to find good, reliable sources of information in regards to the business that they're in or the industry that they're in. Uh, the, the thing is that the information is out there. Um, it's fairly easy to find but it's easy of course because i i know where to look now um but like if you started in 2013 it would have been a very 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 different place in terms of like getting access to people and information like first party uh, contacts or steam contacts and so on so that stuff is on the one hand easier but on the other hand there's so much shit out there uh, that it might be hard to kind of go through and find what's what's what. Um, like there's the global games industry guide uh, is an amazing piece of work done by uh, Liam, I can't pronounce his last name, but T-W-O-S-E, -T -E, um, which basically has anything you need to start your own stuff and also like information and publishers, craft, conferences, schedules and stuff. Uh, but if you don't know to, where to look, then you might be a, a bit fucked. Um, and, but, you know, that was hard back then, I guess, as well. Um, otherwise, it's, it's, the, it's the usual shit, like saturation. Saturation is an issue. If you don't think about saturation when you start, you're going to get uh, fucked over at some point. Hmm. <sighs> okay, we don't have the technology to beep Johan's bad words. Oh, uh, yeah. So you Sorry have to French. add on your beeps locally on your client. Uh, Anton, uh, what would you say is the biggest challenge for startups, game startups? Today. Today. Yeah, yes. reach definitely. The, the the things they mentioned is 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 uh, getting harder and harder all the time in one way, uh, and for certain kinds type types of games. So so landscape is changing all the time. What an influencer want to pick up, and there's a lot of different trends and and things changing all all the time. Um, so if you compare it to five years ago, then you could probably um, reach one of the early influencers way easier than you do today uh, in one way. In some ways, it's easier, and so it's different. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, changing landscape, reach. You, when you said first, you said 
you said saturation, and before that you said that there's so much shit out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. We talk, we used we used different words on on an earlier panel. <laughs> uh, we said competition for visibility. Uh, do you yeah, agree I, that I didn't mean shit as video games? I mean shit as just like there's so much information that it's hard to parse what's actually good information and what's bad information. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, there's tons of games as well. Uh, so so um, if that's let's focus on that challenge then. What what what's the answer? How can you how how can you deal with that? The competition for visibility. What's your best strategy? Uh, neck tattoo works really well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> brilliant. Not for everybody. Uh, <laughs> Peter, you you've been landfall has been ridiculously successful in in getting that attention. Yeah. So so I think at least for for our part we are able to be fast. Uh, because we, we, I don't know, we just work fast and we can turn things over quickly, which means that when, when the market changes and we see that a new type of game is allowed to be made, which is like kind of what, how I view it when, uh, when influencers change their behavior, it doesn't mean now everyone should do this game. It means like, oh, look at all these cool new games. that are now viable to make and sell that weren't before because they now have a way to be marketed. Um, so when that happens every so often, uh, it's important to go, oh, okay, cool. Is this something that that we are passionate? Like, do we like this type of games? Can we figure out how to make this a good one? And how fast can we do that? Because this clock is is ticking and it's like, you know, you, you can't really predict what will happen in the future, but you can be like, this works right now. So if we really want quick, beep quick, then we can like go there and make something and and ride that little little thing. But everybody agreed um, that artistic integrity was the core of, of indie just a minute ago. And now you're saying the not. influencers <laughs> decide. The influencers decide. What's it going to be? Is it is it so, are are the indies are they the captives of the influencers? Is it the in influencers that are the new gatekeepers, the new publishers, the new suits? No. Uh, I think I think to an extent, if you are in a market making uh, products for someone else that isn't just yourself, you are dependent on what is marketable in that market. Uh, and I, I never said that that indie was about integrity. I, I no, like that, the that's the other guys. Is it legal? Yeah. Is it legal? Is it legally indie or is it not legally indie? Because uh, that's not a scale, and there's no opinions there. Um, but but I think it's healthy to to realize that these are all the games that you want to make and like obviously don't make games that you don't want to make because they will suck and you will be bad at it and you will fail. But but in this way of games that you want to make, there's probably a few of them that is just like mm, these games are currently kind of okay to make because you know people can play and share them or like Twitch, they're you know. They, they they function, whereas all of these other games that you like to make, uh, it's just maybe no one will buy your your chess copy, even though you really like to make chess copies. Like it's just good. Wow. There's also a case for doing the opposite and just going, okay, so this is popular right now. That means that no one is doing the other thing, so I'm just gonna go fucking run in the opposite direction, because there's still like the audience is still there. People are still playing uh, Tiger Woods from 2008. Because they like the three-click style golf. <laughs> uh, well, the golf club and PGA 2K21 uh, is raking in tons and tons and tons of people to play golf games. It doesn't have the three-click system, and so you know, doing a, a high-fidelity golf game with a three-click system is probably a good idea. Maybe a good idea right now because all of the three-click ones are basically like cartoony shit that people don't like. But there's old yeah. people and people that grew up with those three-click systems. That would love to play that, and maybe it's not like twenty-two thousand million people that would buy it. But if you're a startup or if you're, you know, a, a decent-sized, mid-sized company, it might be enough people if you just get in touch with them and talk to them and build something they actually want. Mm -hmm. You can do that with integrity still. Can you make a golf game if you don't love golf? Yes. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, th I think Tim Carroll did one, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What's the golf? <laughs> Anton, tell us the story. They made it. They made it. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, Peter, go ahead. 
I don't know. They made a golf game for people that hate golf. Yep. Uh, so it's it's definitely possible. But was it the three click system? No, it's better. It was it's one um, click. <laughs> yeah, it's one click. <laughs> so you have one click. Press. We actually have a question here. Um, okay. Question for for landfall. Uh, is that a glass of wine? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you want a glass of wine. It's nothing. empty glass of wine. It's a wine okay. glass. It's not a glass of wine. Get, and get real. And then they the ask Discord. if you're making a landfall among us. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot confirm nor deny any such suspicions. <laughs> so yes. Okay. Great. Totally uh, accurate werewolf-ish. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, totally accurate werewolf. A question for Joan. How important are incubation programs for? in the startups depends on where you kind of start from like in terms of what knowledge you have like Peter mentioned before that if they started today they would do things differently uh, i expect that to be from based on the knowledge you've gained since you started uh, i mean incubator programs can definitely be helpful in terms of like avoiding some very common pitfalls um, it can also be detrimental because occasionally it becomes a bubble um, where you end up together with people that are doing stuff like you do and you're all invested in everyone's success and there is not enough self-reflexivity uh, within the incubator or within the community that you're building um, that doesn't properly uh, help you to prepare for the, 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 the fucking brutal launch you will have down the line. Uh, so there's like pluses and minuses. Uh, if it's cheap, they give you an office, they give you some place to sit, and they give you like business coaches and shit that you can listen to or not. But you, you, like if you can get together and work together without having to pay money for it, it's great. If you can also get access to their programs, that's great. And there's, I mean, there's there's there is knowledge that you can use in those places. I, you know, I was part of an incubator program for a long time. But you, you were a business it's not coach. Just yeah, yeah. Uh, not necessarily the uh, the the greatest business coach in the world, but um, but there's I would argue that there are there's ways to use and abuse um, incubator systems if you're starting up, and you know when you're starting up you should find stuff to use and abuse as much as possible. Anything that gives you leeway or uh, gets you a step ahead of, of anyone else is good, but keep in mind that no generalized program can ever be uh it, it's not a it's not a template there's no way to just do this and that success happens uh it's it's still up to you to figure out how to uh fit into a extremely saturated market and how to utilize the strengths and weaknesses that comes with with the crew that you've amassed so far uh and the yeah, incubators can be helpful for that, for sure. One of the questions that were uh, prepared was, uh, is what is required today to land a deal? What does a publisher, investor, slash investor expect of your company? Maybe I can flip that a little bit or twist that a little bit. Uh, what, what's, the, what's the most common mistake that you see when you look at the investment or publishing deals that, that the developer makes? What's, what's, what's the pitfall? What's the, what's the no split repetition mis mistake? Is there one and what is it? You want to go think, first, uh, Petter? I'm Petter. first? I think, I think most mistakes are uh, forgivable. I, I think uh, if, 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 we, if I see a game that's, or I think, I think if you pitch an investor or publisher and they, they, uh, they play your prototype, which I think it's hard to get investment or publishing without a prototype, unless you come from like a brand, like, like, unless you like, unless you have a really good track record, it's, it's, it's going to be really hard. So I'm going to assume that you have a prototype and the, the, I think the most pitfalls are in the prototype and less about the pitch. Uh, because the investor slash publisher will hunt you down for the mistakes that you've made in your pitch if they enjoy the prototype. Um, so I, I don't know. When I talk to people, I mostly like stress less about the, 
the pitch because everyone makes a bunch of mistakes. Like they, they budget wrong too little, too much. Uh, they, they, they haven't, oh yes, this, they haven't figured out. They say that they're, they're going to, they made a prototype then they're going to hire some people, but they haven't figured out who, which is a huge, that's a huge red flag and a huge risk because here I am and I'm just like, yes, I believe in this game. And this person is going to bring out a bunch of unknown factors to make this game that they don't know. And they have no clue. I know it's just like, how will I possibly predict how this is going to go? No clue. So at least like find some people who is like, yes, just name them. Be like, yeah, these are the people that I want to bring in and work. This is this person. I admit them this way. They're good people. It doesn't need to be a whole history, but just like, yeah. The rest is fine. Good. So uh, prototype and name the intended team. You won. I think that like the, the largest and one of the most common red flags uh, is that the what's described in the pitch is not what I'm playing. Uh, I 100% agree with like having a build is exceptionally important and that I also agree that the build is more important than the pitch in many ways. Uh, but if there's a massive discrepancy between what you describe as what you're building uh, and then I sit and play it and it's not that at all. Uh, then, then that's like a that worries me because that basically makes me worry that I you don't know what you're building. Um, if you if you lay out like a huge fucking speech about this and that and it's a platformer and has subversive elements of this and that and so so on and so on, and then I I get it in my hands and the, like just the core traversal doesn't work, it feels bad or something or it's not. It's like a shader test with seven different types of cubes just bumping into each other. <laughs> then I'll be like, I would be confused. And uh, it's highly unlikely that that will get you a deal. Uh, whereas if I get something that feels fucking great and it's literally an email saying, I need uh, $200,000 for video game. It's done in 10 months and I play it and it's a good video game. I would go, all right. Let's figure out what the fuck this is about then. Um, we'll, we'll fix those shader cubes in the beta. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll fix it in post. Um, Anton. Yeah. The... All right. Thanks, Johan. Anton, wh wh what do you see when you meet uh, in this? What, what should they think about not doing? They should polish and focus on a smaller have a smaller scope in as, as a start. I, I've, I've played so many prototypes where there is maybe two hours of content, but I will never get there because the first 5, 10, 15 minutes is not captivating enough or they haven't nailed their game feel enough or, or the, the challenges are too easy or too hard. or uh, So play test uh, and have the very, very short... Uh, uh, early play tests uh, to figure out the first five minutes, uh, so you actually will hook hook them in. And also, yeah, don't talk about the future or what's going to happen in two hours uh, and try to solve that, but solve the core experience and try to have that vertical slice as the whole mm. uh, kind of everybody you know preaches, but few actually uh, adhere to. Mm. Yeah, and who has time to play two hours when they're evaluating a, a game? Yeah, no, nobody. <laughs> Especially yeah. if the first five ten minutes isn't aren't fun enough, right? Right. So. Okay. Mm. Um, so we're almost out of time, folks. Uh, my my last question is a last tip, a last tip for indies and st or startups slash startups. A last tip, like uh, there will be no more tips after this. This is your last tip. Um. I have some concrete uh, advice that kind of tacks into the uh, the previous question as well. So, skippable cutscenes, skippable text, three saves from different parts of the fucking build, please, that I can go into if I want to show people something uh, that I've been playing. And last, lastly, uh, the last tip and one of the most important ones, I, I'd argue, as soon as you start thinking about a game, start thinking about how you will be market it, marketing it and start building a community early, early, early. Sweet. Thanks, Johan. Petter? So there is a way to like just sidestep all of the things that we talked to. It's just like, don't get a publisher. <laughs> do it. 
Yeah. That's also a way for sure. But then you, you talked about feeding people. So how do you feed them? Hire skeletons. A what? <laughs> Hire skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there, there are other ways of financing that isn't uh, that isn't publishing. Okay. Uh, yeah, some some games should be financing and equity financing. Yeah, uh, which is which is uh, probably a more profitable way for you and your person in your lifetime. Hire skeletons, summon the dead. This is not the indie panel anymore. It's the occult panel. Anton, last tip. Uh, I, I wanted to ask what, what what Petter said there about equity. Is equity better than having a publishing deal? Did you say that just now? I I, I said that there are other ways of getting money that isn't publishing deals. Okay. Uh, and equity is one of them. I didn't I didn't specify if it's better or not, but uh, one can. I mean, it depends on your equity deal. I can't just say equity deals in general are better than publishing deals. That's the same. Wow. Are you independent if you have an equity deal? Are you independent if you have a publisher? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> when they talk about panels and moderation, they always say, leave the audience wanting more. I think we have a million unanswered questions right now, and they all popped up <laughs> at the end. So I think we really lived up to the expectation of leaving the audience wanting more. But I also think we, well, not we, you said some good things on the way. So thank you for that. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. And uh, and and the fun, the passion, and the and the legal legally indie, Peter. I think legally indie is a great label for uh, some some bunch <laughs> launch on whatever platform you like. Legally indie, let's do it. All right, Anton, Johan Torreson, Peter Henriksson, and your name is Anton Albin. Uh, you also have a last name. We all have last names. <laughs> thanks for being on this panel, uh, and thanks for going indie. And have fun and see you next time. And big hand. Yeah. All right. And uh, that's it for the indie panel.